Okay, everybody, tonight, this is a special uh, bonus we're gonna do today, this smoked roasted salmon. Um, a lot of people have trouble cooking fish on a grill, uh, so this is gonna be a way to show you how to do this pretty safely. I've got four huge scallions here, otherwise known as Mexican grilling onions. They are delicious, especially when smoked or put on a grill. And this is a whole side of a pink salmon, just an Atlantic salmon. Underneath, I've got some thin sliced oranges, some scallions, and on top is my dust mix with some smoked paprika. That's it. This is on, a, and this is on top of a cedar plank, okay? In this packet, I've got applewood and mesquite. When you're smoking meat, it's always good to have a wood smoke that complements what you do. Fish, poultry, and pork need more delicate smoke than beef and venison and other types of meats. So applewood is always a great thing to use and it's my primary source. Now hickory typically is what you use for pork, but for fish, mesquite is a wonderful flavor. Mesquite goes great with chicken. Typically you'll see mesquite roasted chicken, but mesquite has a sweet smoke to it and it's absolutely delicious. It works great with things like this, especially with a fleshy fish like salmon. You don't have to be scared about cooking salmon in the outside, on a grill. I'm gonna show you how to do it safely and easily. Tonight we're cooking on the Smoke Hollow uh, 4-in-1 Pro Series. And we are doing, uh, we're using my offset smoker here tonight. So in here is gonna be some charcoal to heat it up, along with my wood chips on top, and the smoke's gonna billow in here and smoke our fish. And we're gonna run it about 200 degrees. You don't wanna run it any hotter than that for fish, otherwise it's gonna turn into chalk. We don't want chalk. We want delicious fish. All right, my charcoal's going over there. I'm gonna get that into the smoker and I will see you here in a bit. All right, so we've got a charcoal in there. You can see it's kind of ashed over, but you've got a nice glow in the center. That's what we want, all right? These gloves I'm wearing, okay, these are heat resistant up to 1500 degrees. Do not deal with charcoal or hot stuff without adequate protection. You will hurt yourself. These are great. They cover my arms. I've hurt myself too many times to mention. Get some of these. Okay, next bit, we have to get our wood on there. Now, a lot of people will put the wood directly on there, but you don't want to do that. And the reason why is that your wood isn't there for heat. Your wood is just there for flavor. So we're going to put this wood right here in, and you can see the smoke starting already. Uh, the aluminum foil is going to insulate it just enough to get it hot. I've got my damper. This is a, called a damper. I've got that fully open. I've got this guy fully open. And I've got my chimney fully open. So what's gonna happen is that this box is gonna get real hot. It's gonna start smoking. The air is gonna come from here, through here, and up there. And we're gonna get a nice billowing smoke coming out of this pretty soon. We're gonna put our fish in, and it's only gonna take about nine minutes to cook. I will see you when it's ready. We're going to check our temp. Um, it's a little cold out tonight. It's about 55 degrees here in PA. So your temperature gauge on the top of your smoker isn't going to be accurate. Um, and then these kind of temperatures are generally only accurate between 72 and 100 degrees Fahrenheit outside. So we're going to touch on this guy. Okay, and we are at 202. So here's what we're going to do. This guy is going to go in whole hog right on this cedar plank. Just like that. Real easy. The onions are going to go right next to them on the grates here. We're going to close this guy. We're going to open our damper. 
this is our damper here. You can see I've got this half, it's half closed. What that does is limit the flow of air. Okay, and when you limit the flow of air, um, it allows the smoke to be more uh, gentle on the meat. Fish needs a gentle smoke. Unlike pork that can take a lot of it over time, and chicken as well, and beef in particular, especially brisket, fish really doesn't respond well to smoke over about 150 degrees. And Tracy's got a squeaker in her mouth, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but if you have a pellet grill, this is, this is not a pellet grill obviously, but if you have a pellet grill, you may notice that when you set the temp at 250, that the fish comes out dry. All right, well that's why. Pellet grills don't have the ability to go all the way down to where you need them. Most fish needs to be quote unquote cold smoke. And that means under 125 degrees Fahrenheit to get uh, the right flavor because fish is such a delicate material, right? It's a delicate protein. Similar to when we cook the scallops in our scallops video and how it's so partially frozen and they cook all the way through anyway. Same thing applies here. Now, my temperature gauge is only reading 110. That's fine. Again, if it's under 65 degrees, actually if it's under 72 degrees, don't pay any attention to this. It, it, totally inaccurate. <laughs> don't worry about it. And that's why you got to get, you know, a probe thermometer, infrared, something like that. This damper here, on a traditional smoker like this guy is, controls the airflow out. So your air comes in here, comes out here, and goes up through your uh, chimney, right? Now, if you shut the air off completely in here, what's going to happen is, when the airflow gets cut off, you're effectively turning it off. The wonderful thing about traditional smokers like this, that have um, an offset firebox like this, is that you have total control over how you're smoking the meat. The other great thing for this is electric smokers, and the thing, I know people hate electric smokers, but here's the thing. If you have an electric smoker and you need to do a huge party, you need to serve a lot of people, you need something that's really, really consistent, an electric smoker is what you need. Because it can keep a constant temp without any maintenance whatsoever. And they want, there's something, there's something back there. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Protecting the homestead. <laughs> anyway, so this function is very similar. The electric smokers are built to mimic the function of this. Right? And when it's hot out, it's easier to smoke meat, obviously. And when it's cold out, you need to put a blanket over this to get it some insulation. But ideally, with an offset smoker in this regard, you have wood on top of the charcoal. You can see the smoke flowing from here to here right through it. It's cooking your food slowly while also flavoring. So I'm going to let this go for about 25 minutes at this 125 temp, and I will see you soon. Okay, so this has been smoking for about 25 to 30 minutes, actually, excuse me, 27 minutes. Okay, I'm going to count back. Can you see I'm at 150? Okay. Now, like I told you before, this temperature gauge, this outdoor temperature is not accurate, so don't believe it. But this means that we're about 30 degrees above that, because that's about the tolerance level of these. So, at 27 minutes, and 100, let, let's say it's 180 degrees, our fish has absorbed as much smoke as it can possibly take. Okay. This is a huge mistake that people make when they're smoking things. They smoke them for hours and hours and hours, and then they wonder why they get dried out. Well, here's the thing. After a certain point, usually after a certain temperature, no meat, whether it's fish, chicken, pork, beef, lamb, venison, elk, whatever it is, will take more smoke. And the longer you leave it in the smoke, the more dry it's going to get. And this specifically applies to poultry. So, here we go. Now this guy has been rolling. You can see 
the smoke's been billowing around it. Now this doesn't look done, but watch this. See when I press that, it, it, it's firm and it pushes back. That means all of the smoke has gone into this. Okay, and you can see this here. My applewood and uh, mesquite are black. They're done. My charcoal only has about a couple of embers left and that's almost burnt out too. So we're almost done here. So what do we do next? Well, with fish like this, and because it's on that cedar plank, we're gonna stick it on our hot side and we're gonna roast the rest of it. Now we're gonna get this side really, really hot. This is propane. Most restaurants that you go to do this exact same step in their kitchen. So they're gonna do cold smoke in their internal smoker and then put it on a ripping hot grill. We're gonna do exactly the same thing here, just on our back patio. Now with fish, this is an infrared burn, okay? This guy can get to over 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you have steaks or anything you wanna emulate that steakhouse flavor, this is what you gotta use. But for fish, don't do that unless it's really thick and really firm. Swordfish, mahi-mahi, or something thick, you know, thick flesh, right? So with this guy, now that it's taken all the smoke it can take, because when I press on it, it bounces back. Do you see that? And it's warm to the touch. That means all of the smoke is gone. It's taken all the smoke it can. We're gonna put it onto our hot side. And how we do that is we make sure we have our, our gloves on, okay? I've got my spatula. I'm gonna put my spatula under one end and keep this on the other end. And this cedar plank is gonna go right in the middle. We're gonna keep these onions in to the smoke, all right? Now here's the thing. People say, don't put cedar, don't put salmon on cedar plank. I saw a uh, video recently from a very reputable food publication that said cedar planks don't make a difference. That's because they did it wrong. So with cedar planks and any kind of wood, slow cooking, low and slow, is how you get the flavor out of the wood. If you take a cedar plank and you stick it on a 900 degree Fahrenheit grill, it's just gonna burn, or if you stick it in a 500 degree oven, it's just gonna burn too. So because we smoked it for that 27 minutes ahead of time, once we stick it in our hot roaster here, okay, once this hits 600 degrees, now this is at 350 now, but once this spikes to 600, between 600 and 625, that fish is done. And it's only gonna take maybe four minutes, because this guy gets really, 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 really hot. The key to cooking fish outside on a grill, or a charcoal grill, or a smoker, or a gas grill, anything like that, is the same rule we apply to every lean protein. Hot and fast, okay? But when you're smoking it, cold and slow. Same difference. Fatty meat needs hot smoke for a long time and uh, cold roasting for a long time. Lean meat needs hot and fast roasting and cold and slow smoking. Basically, they're the opposite. So with this fish, once we're done roasting here, once this hits this temp, we're gonna go ahead, go inside, and eat it. And we're gonna have delicious salmon, and this works with cod, it works with haddock, it works with any firm flesh fish, it also works with any fatty fish. This works with swordfish, mahi-mahi, anything like that, it works perfectly fine. So, if you can come on in here for a second, I'm gonna show you this. Now this has only been on here for what, two minutes? Do you see the pellicle forming on the outside of the fish, okay? Now that can be prevented by putting salt on it, but we don't want to prevent that. We want to make sure that we get these white bits right here on the side and right here on the end. So once we have those white bits, we know the fish is done. This literally has one more minute and then it is finished cooking. And I'm not kidding you, that's the easiest way to cook uh, 
salmon or any kind of fish outside. If you don't have a combo smoker like this, don't worry about it. If you just have a gas grill, turn the gas grill on low. Put one burner on high, three of them or two of them, turn them off. And you can get the same type of effect. And you can take a little bit of wood chips and stick them in an aluminum container and stick them in aluminum foil. Ugh, God, aluminum foil! <laughs> and stick them right on your burner and get the same type of effect. Fish is delicate. Chicken is delicate. Anything that you typically don't associate with 13 or 15 hour cook times is a delicate process. So remember, hold and slow for things like this. And our salmon, by the way, is now done. So we're gonna go eat this and I will see you soon. But this is the easiest way to smoke roast the salmon outside. All right, everyone, we're ready to go here. This is our smoke roasted salmon that we pulled off of the onions. I'm gonna go ahead and cut into this guy. Oh my, look at that. That is what you wanna see. You see that nice, fleshy interior, how it flakes apart, that. First of all, it's smoked all the way through. Secondly, it tastes like oranges because we put the oranges in the bottom. And it tastes like a stallion. And it tastes like a grape. Oh my god, it's Okay, go, go. All right. So, there's hot smoked salmon and there's cold smoked salmon. And most of the time when you go in the store, the stuff you see fish aisle is cold for the salmon, Nova salmon. This is a cross basically between Nova salmon and Alaska hot smoked salmon. You do it this way, and you're never going to eat it another way again. This is amazing. I'm going to probably eat the rest of this fish. <laughs> and oh, oh, look at that. You see the juice coming out of there? Look at that. Look at that. You see that? Hmm. Not dry at all. It's juicy, it's smoky, it's savory, it's sweet. It flakes apart with no effort whatsoever. Mm. That is how you smoke roast a fish. So, thank you so much for tuning in today. Wow. <laughs> you do this. All my steps here, you're gonna want. Peace out.